My 15 years old daughter is pregnant. She was dating a guy who was 20 years old, but they both lied to me about his age. He was actually a senior at her school. He broke up with her yesterday when she told him she was pregnant and she came to me this afternoon. We hugged and cried a bit, but she said she didn't want to talk more for now. I had to go to work soon. I work from Sunday through Thursday 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and she told me something shocking. She wants to keep the baby. We didn't have time to talk about it, so we agreed to do it tomorrow afternoon. My issue is, I can't handle another kid. I've been raising her and her sister, 11, by myself for the last nine years. Their dad is useless, and I get very little child support. To give you an idea, my kid's school lunch is three times more expensive than the CS I receive. Our flat is small, they each have an eight square meter room, and I sleep on the sofa in the living room. We barely make ends meet. I often skip meals so they can eat enough. There is no space in public childcare and private childcare is too expensive. Someone has to stay with the baby until it turns three, then it can go to kindergarten slash preschool. But what then? A baby doesn't take much room, but a toddler slash preschooler does. I only have this flat because I got some money from inheritance. There's a huge housing crisis in my country. She won't be able to move out with a preschooler but I don't want to force her to have an abortion. Edit, please stop with the religious stuff. I was raised Catholic, I'm the fifth of seven kids. God didn't really care for us. We were in and out of foster homes. So please, enough with the BS. And we are not US citizens, we live in the middle of nowhere in Hungary, Europe. Update, first I want to address a few things. One, trying to use a child's crisis for your own benefit is FNG disgusting. What is wrong with you? There was more than one person who sent me private messages wanting to adopt. Two, I grew up in extreme poverty, so let me tell you, God will not provide, so counting on that is kinda stupid, I'm an atheist. Three, thank you for everyone who commented, talked, or just listened to me. I was panicking and terrified when I wrote the first post and I just needed to get it off my chest to be heard. I appreciate your time and effort made towards me. Now to the update. Yesterday night, we talked a little about what exactly happened. Long story short, her ex pressured her into sex and refused the condom because it's uncomfortable and he will be careful. She didn't realize at first that her period is late because she still didn't have regular cycle. Her first period was in April last year. She told her bestie what's happened and she bought a test a week ago and it came back positive. Then she worked up her courage to tell me and here we are. As we checked, she is probably eight to nine weeks along, or at least the last time they slept together was a little more than nine weeks ago. Today, I took her to the OBGYN. After some scolding from a doctor, he checked her and by touch estimated a seven-week-old pregnancy. Then we went to an ultrasound check and found out that there was no heartbeat. There is no viable pregnancy. The only problem is that the miscarriage hasn't started yet. So she got an appointment to Friday for a cleanup. I was relieved a little bit. I was more worried about my daughter, but to my surprise, she looked relived. On the bus home, she cried a little. She didn't want to talk, just said some, I'm okay, mom, S. I told her we're going to talk about it later, whenever she's ready. Now to the crazy part. Around 1 p.m., she got a call from her friend, but I was the one who answered it. It was her friend's mom and she immediately started questioning my daughter why she wasn't in school. Is the baby okay? Did she told me about adoption? Like WTF. She clammed up when she realized she was talking to me. She acted that she was just worried about my daughter, etc. It was fishy. I woke up my daughter from her nap and warned her that I'm in my last crumbs of sanity right now, so talk. She started crying and between sobs told me, that when she took the pregnancy test, her friend told her mom, and the mom called her friend who was on the wait list for adoption, and that two grown-ass women bullied my daughter until she promised she's going to give the baby up for adoption. They even made her watch the silent scream movie. I'm in rage. The only thing that's stopping me planning a homicide is the law. I broke up with my fiance because of his family. I have doubts about marrying him because of his family. I know people will think I am crazy, but my intuition tells me I am right. I was supposed to meet his parents for the first time. He has a mom, a dad, and two sisters. 
I was looking forward to meeting my future in-laws, but it was a disaster. A few days ago, I met his family. Some things about them just rubbed me the wrong way. His mom is very clingy to him. The first thing she said when she saw me was, so you are the lady that keeps my son busy. It sounded like a joke, but she said it in a snarky tone. She tried to ignore me the whole time. She would get annoyed whenever I got close to my fiance. She made a very rude comment when I asked her for a slice of pie she made. She said I would not fit in my dress if I ate any more of it. She made me sit far away from him so that she could sit next to him. I could tell she did not like me, but I put up with it. But she was very mean to her oldest daughter. She kept making remarks like when are you getting married and if she still can't get over Ben, her BIL. The thing is Mia, oldest daughter, used to date Ben until he left her for the younger sister, Jen. Jen is not very nice either. She was nasty to Mia and kept pressuring her to find a husband. Mia is 33. I don't think she has to hurry. Jin also did not like me because she made some snide remarks about my background. I grew up in an abusive household. I had to fight a lot. My fiancé came from a wealthy family. His dad did not talk much. He did not say anything and just nodded. The only normal person there was Mia because she just stayed quiet. But I did not feel welcome at all by them. I had this gut feeling that if I married him this would be my life. I would always have to compete with his mother. But he is so nice and sweet. I never loved anyone like I love him. He brings me flowers, he takes care of me, he treats me like a queen. But I do not like his family at all. I ended it with him. He was understandably upset. He asked me why. I just told him I did not feel good about us. That we were not a good match. There were tears but I left. Now I am sitting in my aunt's house writing this. Sometimes I feel like calling him and telling him I was scared. We are perfect together. We make good money, we have similar interests, and we are sexually compatible. But this one thing about him bothers me a lot. I am heartbroken. I know I don't have the right to be because I was the one who broke it off. Update. I had a phone call with his sister Mia. It was unexpected that she wanted to talk to me. She heard about our breakup and asked if we could chat on the phone. I said yes. I was eager to hear anything from him. We talked for about an hour. She mostly told me how her family was awful. She said I did the right thing because her mom had a strange fixation on her son. She also said she had no idea why she was the outcast of her family. She was not adopted or a product of an affair. She also said her mother was somewhat racist because of my origin. She wanted to warn me that day. I asked her why my ex did not stand up for her. She said my ex was in denial that they had a perfect family but he did not see how toxic his mom was. She tried to talk to him about it but he just said that they were family. So family should not hold resentment. I felt sorry for her. She also said she would cut off contact with her family. She hoped she could mend their relationship and let them be in her life but she changed her mind. She also told me some personal details about her love life and future plans. But I do not want to reveal that. It is not my business to share it. But she urged me to meet him and tell him the truth. He deserved to know why I did not want to join his family. He needed to hear the truth. I will see him tomorrow. And yes, as many of you asked, I will update you guys. Update 2. Hi guys, I said I would update you. I did it. I finally spoke to him. I told him everything that I wrote in the post. And also how I felt about his family. Especially how they treated Mia. He was obviously hurt. He tried to persuade me that I was imagining things. That I should not give up on us because of his family. His family would welcome me if I joined them. I tried to make him see things from my side. But he did not budge. Then we talked about Mia. He said it was not fair that his sister was leaving the family too. He mentioned Mia's big news and how she said she did not want them in her life. I told him I knew about it because I spoke to Mia. That made him even more angry. He was mad that Mia told me her news before his family. I lost my temper and told him this was exactly why I did not want to join his family. His mother was racist to me, I'm half Bengali. His mother acted like I did not belong and did not make me feel comfortable. His family was very unhealthy. I came from an unhealthy family. I did not want to spend my life in one. Maybe one day he would find a woman his mother liked but that woman was not me. We had a huge argument. He was clearly siding with his family. He did not want to hear what I had to say. He was very dismissive. We ended our conversation on a very bad note. I am sad about it. He was a good guy apart from his family issues. But I do not think I can deal with his family. Because you do not marry just one person. You marry their whole family. They did not even try to get to know me. So that's the update.